Greetings everybody, Eddie B is coming at you. It's the middle of January, so Happy New Year. And I'm titling this video, New Year's Fitness Resolution and Why You're Not Gonna Keep It. So not trying to be facetious or a downer, but read an article that said 73% of people who make a New Year's Fitness commitment do not follow through, fall off somewhere, they don't see it to the end. That bugged me some. If you're a follower of mine, you know one of the things that I really, really value is to try to help other people integrate fitness into their lives and be successful at it. So that bugged me. And notice down at the gym, too, all the newbies who come in for the new year. And you can tell who they are, right? They have that look on their face that they really out of their element a little bit. So they'll walk over to the dumbbell rack and they'll do a few dumbbell curls. Or they'll walk over to, oh, look at the, the fly machines empty. And they'll do some chest flies. But you can see they really don't have a plan. And they, I don't know, actually saw this one guy like walk into a corner where there was, there was no machines or equipment or anything. He just kind of walked into a corner. And he wasn't even looking around you can kind of just see he was a little confused <laughs> about I guess what to do next so um, so yeah I'm dropping this video between weeks two and three in the new year because I understand that's when most people fall off the wagon I'm hoping that I can give you some tips some advice to help you be in the one out of four people who not only have made that commitment but are successful in integrating fitness into your life so let's try and do that Okay, the article that I read gave three main reasons for why people fall off the wagon with their fitness resolution. And the very first reason was that they chose a program or a nutrition plan that was too difficult to keep. The second reason kind of confused me a little bit. We'll address that. People felt that for some reason or other life got in the way and they had to stop their fitness program and they just weren't able to get back on. All right, the third one made complete sense to me. The big complaint was they didn't have time. Okay, so we're gonna address those, but before we do, I think there's an underlying reason to all of those three that will help you to make your resolution stick. And that reason is proper prior planning. All right, three Ps, I don't mean that on purpose, but that just came out that way. All right, so I think that if you plan properly, and think of those those reasons for possibly failing ahead of time you can do this now I'm gonna suggest something radical I'm gonna suggest that you take a pencil and paper or get out your favorite note-taking device or your, your tablet your phone your PC whatever I'm gonna ask you stop the video a minute pause the video I want you to write down two things number one what is your fitness goal Recently, I did some online training, right? I'm a brand new certified personal trainer, decided to offer some free online training. So I took on 13 clients and by far the majority simply wanted to get in better shape, to be more fit. Okay, great. That's a great goal. Maybe your goal is, is, is more strenuous than that. Maybe you're an athlete or an ex-athlete and you want to increase your athleticism. Maybe you want to get bigger. Maybe you want to get stronger. Um, could be a lot of things but beyond what your goal is I want you to think about this what is your why now I'm gonna give you my why as an example back five some six years ago my dad had a major heart attack okay quadruple bypass surgery and I remember standing in the hospital as he was recovering thinking wow I am very similar genetic makeup to this guy do I want to be here 20 years from now? And I certainly, you know, the answer to that is obviously no, I don't. And is there anything I can do about it? So that was my big why is that, and I've said it, I've written it also in my WordPress journal, that I want to see if I can face down my senior years in a semblance of, of fitness so that I can enjoy them and not have to, you know, not, not have my health derail my quality of life. So that was my big why. Your why may be very different. Um, I mean, you could be doing the gig where you're going to the doctor and you're seeing more and more, you're degrading as time goes and you're having to take more meds. And you know that if you did get on an exercise routine and got your nutrition a little straighter, that you could do better in, for yourself that way. Maybe, like I said, your why is you want to do better at sports, so you need to up your athleticism. Maybe your why is simply that you want to look good naked, as Ben Carpenter likes to say. Heck, I would like to just look good in clothes at this point. That's kind of, that's not really my why, but that would be nice too. And uh, 
Joking around, maybe you just want to be ready for the zombie apocalypse. That's a great why, okay? So, all those reasons. But, yeah, so pause the video a minute, and I want, to think of, want you to think about that. Make your goal short and sweet, and then think about your why. And the reason to think about your why is because it's going to carry you through the tough times. So go ahead and do that. All right, so before we address those three main reasons that people fall off the fitness bandwagon, there's one underlying piece that I'd like to address, and I think it will help out some, and that is your support system. Now, each of us have a person or persons in our lives who can be influential to our success or failure in any life change we make, fitness or other, otherwise. So it would be a good idea for you to identify who that person or persons are and I'm going to recommend that you tell them what you're up to. Explain to them that, you know, you want, this is my why, this is, this is my goal, and this is my why. And let them know what you're up to. Because, you know, a lot of times when we make life change, is it's some subconscious way threatening to those people around us sometimes. So I found my, my own family back in 2015 when I got involved um, trying to get into a fitness thing here that there was resistance. They were like, you know, what are you, what are you doing at your age doing this stuff? And what, what's the, all the, the nutrition, the eating changes that you're making? You know, you're doing fine. Stop it. Kind of stuff. So uh, I was a, a little extreme with my eating at first. I, I think I mentioned I went keto. And when you go keto, it's like you go, you know, mom, I'm not having potatoes with Sunday dinner this week kind of stuff. So, but it's all right. That all works out. So that's what I'm going to just suggest you do that. Identify the people who are close to you who can support you through this. Let them know what you're up to. Ask them for your support. And you might think about taking it one step further. Ask them if they want to go along on the journey with you. All right, let's discuss those three reasons that have derailed people from making that fitness resolution and the number three reason was time yeah we time is short for a lot of us and I think the only good way for you to beat the time bug is for you to schedule get a calendar out and schedule your time for fitness now a couple pointers on this I'm gonna highly recommend if you are all able to accommodate do your fitness training in the morning okay uh, a couple reasons for that the day hasn't started yet, so disruptions are less likely to get in the way of a morning fitness schedule. Um, another reason is that if you, for some reason, have to miss your morning schedule, you have the rest of the day to think about where you might fit it in. Another time that people seem to like uh, to do some fitness workouts is before they get home from work, they'll stop off at the gym. Or I have uh, two people that I was training decided to do it when they came home from work, they, the first thing they did was they had a home, little home gym set up, they did their workout, and then they got into their evening routine, getting dinner, uh, all that good stuff. So those are two, several good times of day. I do know somebody who also did training in their lunch break. They had an hour lunch break, so they took 45 minutes to do some physical fitness training then. So these are good things to do. I'm going to highly recommend you do not schedule your training for the end of the day. All right? I think that's a sure recipe for failure if you do that. Um, if, you, if your day is at all like mine, at the end of the day, there's a whole ton of things that I didn't get done. So if you add fitness to that, most likely it's not going to take a priority. So schedule your time. Seriously, get out your calendar, mark off time for you to do your fitness work. Okay, the second reason that was given that people don't follow through on their fitness resolution is that their program was interrupted and they found it too difficult to get back in the swing of things. Now, I thought about this a little bit. Really, I think the best solution for that is if you anticipate that your program is going to be interrupted, then you'll be able to better bounce back from it. So for example, the kids are going to get sick. They're going to have to wind up staying home from school or your car's going to break down. Or a friend's car is going to break down and you're going to have to go pick them up. Things that will interrupt your fitness schedule time. If you anticipate that, it'll be easier to overcome because you'll recognize it for what it is. It'll, sure, it's frustrating. You're not going to get to do your morning routine or, or your lunch routine. But think about that. 
that say, hey, I've already thought this is going to happen, and if it does, I've got a plan that I'm going to then come hell or high water get that workout in a little later in the day. Or, hey, if you miss a day, don't sweat it. Pick it up the next day and carry on. I've actually gone for an entire week without being able to follow through on my workout commitments. Um, I have a job that sometimes requires me to attend to emergency situations. And I had one happen back in, in, the, in the autumn time that just took me an entire week to address a work situation and I could not get to the gym. Don't let it derail you. You will be interrupted, promise. But tell yourself you've got a plan to pick it back up. Julie, do the, uh, the thing. All right, number one reason given was the difficulty of program or nutrition plan. Now, I think those are two very different things, so let's address them in two different segments here. First, the difficulty of program. So one of the things I'm going to recommend that you don't do, and if you've done this already, um, we'll talk about that in a minute, don't get that very popular program that's being advertised on TV that you can get online and you can do this workout thing with all the best trainers in the world or the program that's promising you a beach body in 90 days kind of thing. All right, If you are a newbie to fitness person, a lot of these things are pretty rigorous and they're pretty tough and I get it. I understand why you didn't follow through because they're, they're just too difficult. Especially as a certified personal trainer, when I offered training, um, I had a handful of people who were just getting up off the couch for the first time, so it would be really hard for them to take on a program like that. You know, literally, for the, for the first week, I just got people on schedule to just take a walk for 20 minutes and then 30 minutes a day. You know, show me you can do that, and then we'll get on to some bigger stuff. So maybe that's where you are, too. But don't get a plan that's too difficult for yourself. And the other thing I'm going to suggest is that you don't get a free plan. You know, there's a saying that um, we'll value something more if we pay for it. Well, I found that in fitness that's very true. Myself, it's true, and for other people, that if you put out some money for something, you're more likely to uh, value it and stick to it. So find yourself a program that is, I, I mean, I've, I've put out some recommendations on my social media channels for some programs that are great for newbies to fitness kind of thing um, that will do you well, you fit into your schedule. And hey, yours truly is now a certified personal trainer and if you can't find something, I'd be happy to write you a program for a small fee, but that's not why I'm doing this video. But just to say, find yourself a program that's appropriate with your level, especially for entry level people, don't pick something too difficult. And then you'll find that you'll be able to keep on your program more easily. All right, and the final piece we need to address is nutrition, that people fall off their plans because the nutrition was too difficult to keep. I get that. In fact, I think nutrition is probably the most difficult piece of a fitness lifestyle to get down and to keep well. So, what I'm going to suggest is this. If you are starting off as a newbie and you've got this plan that's got really strict nutrition, I'm going to ask you not to sweat it. And if you slip on it, don't let that stop you from doing your workouts, okay? Um, I'm giving you a pass, all right? Eddie, Eddie B's giving you a pass. Now, you, the reason I'm doing this is because you will have time to work out nutrition. And trust me, nutrition drives fitness people crazy. I've, so many of the social media sites that I'm part of, uh, people talking about cutting and bulking or what are my macros, how much protein should I have and carbs and fats in my diet and should I eat them early, should I eat them late, all this. Nutrition can drive you crazy. And I'm here to say, don't let it. If you are, especially if you are a newbie, yeah, you want to keep in mind that nutrition is important and you're going to have to eventually get it straight, but I don't want that to derail you getting involved in a fitness lifestyle, okay? First great step for you to take if you want to start getting your nutrition straight is to get in your kitchen and to rate it of all the junk food that you know is in there, okay? Best thing you can do, I mean, we're, here we are post-holidays, hopefully your Christmas cookies are gone by now, right? And if not, put them in a nice box and take them to work and put them on the counter for other people to eat. But go, go after your junk foods, go after your sugary drinks, go after the stuff that you know is not amenable to your fitness goals, okay? That's a great place to start, and then there's a lot more to it, 
but let's save that for another time. Keep it simple so you can keep on the program. All right, everybody, going to wrap it up now. Just thanks for watching. If there is anything you got out of this video that was good, um, if there's anything you got out of it that was bad, I hope you just toss it out. Anything you got out of it that was good, though, I would appreciate your thumbs up. And more so, I'd appreciate if you have not subscribed yet that you do subscribe and then hit the little bell so that you get notified when I do do a new video. Um, it's your subscriptions and your thumbs up that keep me coming back. So if you have any questions about any of the material that I presented here, please always feel free to comment below. I have yet to not respond to a comment that's asked for a response. Or um, shoot me an email. I leave my email address here and also you can hit me on my WordPress site. I have a comments page there. So there's a couple ways you can get to me. Happy to help you to integrate fitness into your life. That's one of my avocations right now is to try to help people get on that train, that fitness train. And if you follow me, you'll know that that is true. So I hope you did enjoy the video and I hope you do have a healthy, prosperous and fitness full new year. Peace out. Julie, do the, uh, the thing.